Boop. There we go. So, boop. Yeah. Boop. All right, so percent yield is literally the percentage that you yield or how good a reaction is. So, if you were to, as a, a life example, if you were to make some cookies and you weighed all of the batter or all the ingredients that are going to the batter, you weighed all the ingredients and it turns out that there was 2.5 kilograms of, I'm just going to say batter. That's about right. 2.5 kilograms of everything in there. And then you made your cookies and you found that you only produced 2.1 kilograms of cookies, there's a percent yield of cookies. Okay? In other words, you would divide by how much you actually made by how much you should have made if everything was perfect. If you didn't have a little brother eating the, the batter and if you didn't um, get some stuck on the spoon. Um, if you weighed out all of your batter and uh, you had less cookies, you have a percent yield of cookies. So what is your percent yield of cookies? It's 2.1 divided by 2.5. Alexa, what is 2.1 divided by 2.5? 2.1 divided by 2.5 is 0.84. Okay, so when we calculate that out, it's 84%. So you have an 84% yield in your cookie reaction. Does that idea make sense? Okay. And that's what percent yield does too. In reality, we very rarely have uh, perfect reactions. Very rarely do the reactions um, proceed perfectly, where all the reactants become all the products. So we use a percent yield to express just how good we are. Okay, let's another example. If 19 grams of product is calculated from a process that was calculated it was collected from a process calculated to produce 21 grams, what is the percent yield? So if we got 19 grams of P and we calculated we should have put 21 grams of P, then what's our percent yield? 90%? So this is going to be 0.90 and we're going to convert that to 90%. So we would say this process has a percent yield of 90% which in reality is extraordinarily good. A lot of reactions don't even come close to 50. Really? Yeah. There's a lot of waste. There's a lot of waste in the stuff that you make. Luckily for you, most of it's left in China. 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 <laughs> most of your Happy Meal toys, all that, all the pollution. Okay. So, but, but hey, as long as you want $10 DVDs, that's going to be the way it's going to be. Hey, you want that mixtape? <laughs> okay, so a percent yield is always the actual over the calculated. Okay, percent yield is always actual over the calculated. And the calculated value, whatever you get from stoichiometry, is going to be the denominator. So let's do one. If 35 grams of zinc reacted with excess copper sulfate, just like our lab reaction, and only 32.5 grams of copper are recovered, what is the percent yield of this reaction? So when you take this exercise apart, it looks like this. You're starting with 35 grams of zinc, that's your reactant. You're going to calculate how much product you should make and how much product you actually make is going to be in the numerator. How much you calculate you should make is going to be in the denominator. So let's make a t-chart. And in the t-chart, we're going to start with our reactant, which is 35 grams of zinc. And our goal is going to be grams of copper. So nothing new about this calculation. You've done this calculation before in lab. What's my next move here? Bring down grams of zinc. And I'm going to convert to one mole of zinc is how many grams of zinc? 65.4. 65.4? All right, if you say so. So one mole of zinc is 65.4 grams of zinc. Now that I have my moles of zinc, what can I do? 
use my mole ratio. So I'm going to convert moles of zinc to moles of copper, and it turns out to be a one to one ratio. One to one. Then what's my next move? Yeah, bring down my moles of copper and convert it to grams of copper. And for those who might not be where everybody else or where you, we are, um, where does a mole to gram come from? Molar mass from the periodic table. Cool. So, uh, what is the molar mass of copper? 63.5? All right, do you say so? All right, so this is the reaction. If everything was perfect, and we plugged in 35 grams of zinc, if everything was perfect, this is the amount of copper we would get back. This is gonna be our calculated value, also called the ideal value. This is where you bang on your calculator and give me a number. Thirty-four. Okay, is that about right? Is that what you got? Thirty-four. Yeah. All right. So if everything was perfect, we would make thirty-four grams of copper. So our percent yield is going to be the actual amount that the exercise gave us, which is thirty-two point five, divided by the calculated value of thirty-four. What is this going to be? 96. 96? All right. So this is going to be 0 0.96, which we're then going to convert to 96%. OK. So from the top, we have a reactant given to us. We process the T-chart to give us what the product should be if everything was perfect. That's the ideal value or the calculated value. We put that in the denominator. The exercise gives us how much we actually recovered. The actual value goes in the numerator. We divide the two and we get a percent yield. Okay, give me a thumbs up if this makes sense to you. Okay, most of you are on board. Okay, any questions? Okay, that's the simplest type of percent yield calculation. There is another type. Okay. The other type is the expected amount calculation. Okay. Expected amount. So if you invited, if you invited uh, 80 students to a big party, you're going to have a huge party, Quinceanera, Sweet 16, you invite 80 students. And you generally, from past observation, you generally expect about 60% participation. How many students should you expect to show up? What is your expected number? 48? How did you get 48? Yeah. So the expected value is 48. Okay. So you can do this in stoichiometry too. If in stoichiometry you say, well, this is how much uh, everything I would get if I was perfect, this reaction really only goes about this percent yield, 75%. Then you would multiply your ideal value or your calculated value by your percent yield and you would get an expected value. Okay. Does this idea make sense? Give me a thumbs up if I'm, if I'm making sense. Okay, cool. So let's do one of these together. If the reaction of 2Na plus Cl2 yields 2NaCl has a percent yield of 88%, I'm sorry, you can't read the bottom, it says how much sodium chloride should be produced from 17 grams of chlorine. So how much should be produced from 17 grams of chlorine? I'm sorry? 17 grams of sodium. Like I said, how much sodium chloride should be produced from 17 grams of sodium? So we're going to start the calculation just like we always do, 17 grams of sodium. Okay. 
Go ahead and work this one out. I'm going to be a couple minutes behind you. And then whatever you get, you're going to set as your calculated value. So you're going to go 88% equals expected over calculated value. And the calculated value is going to come from the T-chart. So go ahead and work on the T-chart if you wouldn't mind. Wait, so we're trying to find CL? You're trying to find NaCl. Okay. So you're going to use the Na to find NaCl. That NaCl is going to be your calculated value. And then you're going to set that equal to, in the denominator, oh, equal to 88%. And you're going to solve for your expected value. Okay. Got it. Any other questions? All right.